Good day, Snapdragon here. You may know me as Captain Morwin or as one of the four directors of Starcat Studios. So welcome to the first episode of Oh Snap. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with myself for that joke, if you can't tell. Anyway, not many in the community actually know who I am. I'm a huge introvert, so I guess I just don't do people very well. I'm sure a few of you can relate. On that note, I have never actually made a video before, aside from posting a few of my animations from college on my massively underdeveloped channel. So here's my first go at making actual content. As you know, I am the least vocal and least known member of the StarCat Studios team of directors, the invisible director, if you will. I am a background painter, an animator, and I make a lot of the character moments that you get through Patreon. So I mostly just do background stuff and leave all of the fan interaction and social media updates to my more personable counterparts. I figured this would be fun to have some videos that explain some behind the scenes work we do while making clouded moon shifting roots. I'm not sure what other kinds of videos and subjects I will cover on OSnap, or even if I'll like making videos and continue to do so after this. It's been a rough couple months for us, so I figured I would do something new and special. Anyway, many patrons have been interested in hearing about our process, and I do like to throw random tidbits in the Discord for them. But I've been toying around with making longer videos lately. Videos that explain more aspects about certain things we do and certain choices we make. So, for my first video, let's talk about some of the production process of Clouded Moon, shall we? Specifically, the style we used on the intro and will be using for flashback sequences in Chapter 2. I don't know how many of these behind-the-scenes videos I'll make. I guess it depends on if I find more cool stuff to show you or if the patrons want to know about something in particular. So here I present you a very riveting time-lapse of me drawing a single frame of Spotted Shadow or Raven as she was known at the time. This is for the flashback sequence we have in Chapter 2. So. Let's look at the style, and I'll explain how it came to be. During the production of episode one, things were really hectic because it was our first time working together and kind of finding our groove, not to mention the sheer amount of characters we had to animate. It was a lot. So as we were making it through production and animating everything, we weren't thinking so much about the intro or even the credits. We hadn't really planned anything yet. We were actually most of the way through chapter one before we decided to tackle the intro. We had this idea that we wanted to make it PMV style. That is, picture music video. Animator slang that I just learned the meaning of from the internet because I'm really bad at acronyms and kept forgetting. So we wanted a PMV, and we wanted a certain stylistic flair to it. Tennille drew up some sketchy solid colored versions of the characters with simple color palettes. And I think we kind of had the same idea in mind because I had pictured almost exactly the same thing. We brainstormed about the images we wanted and the feeling we wanted to convey based on the intro cut version of the Shifting Roots song by Blixamy. After that, I made this storyboard and we toyed with colors and how we wanted to show the characters. It was a pretty involved brainstorm process actually, but we ended up with these. Most of the original images did change into the actual version, but the idea stayed the same. It was really tricky to fit a whole idea for a scene into like two lines of a song. We had toyed with showing Spotty and Golden's friend groups at first, Dawn Frost and Wolfthorn staring longingly across the lake, and Wildfur being an outcast. And the hardest part was actually the last part, the gotta fight, gotta try to survive. 
So in the storyboard, you can see that we sort of wanted to show busts of the characters, and we used fight as Don's keyword, try as Spotty's, survive as wild and wolf, and then the plant your feet was for Swift Mask, and the face the beast was for Golden Pelt, and those are all our main characters. You can totally theorize what all this means, and people totally have. It's really fun, actually the word association and symbols to describe story elements and characters. We ended up keeping the character busts for the shot, but not in the same way it looks in the storyboard, obviously. Then Tenille put together a quick animatic of the intro. This was all done in one Toon Boom file, which he then handed to me, as we sort of decided that I would be the one to do the bigger chunk of work on the intro, because at the time I had the most free time and I don't have a day job, so that's the way it is. <laughs> so really, Tenille is the brains, and I am the brawn. I'm just kidding. I did add a lot of my own touch to the design style, too. So I painted backgrounds and edited some parallax shots. A side note about the parallaxes. I had to paint each piece of the background for Marsh Colony and Oak Colony and then put them together in After Effects on different planes. It gives the background a lot of depth and it looks really good when you move the camera around. So those shots are only on screen for a couple seconds, but they look good. So back to drawing the characters. The idea behind the style we were going for was this solid colored in almost flat looking version of the characters with a pencil or pastel texture. We chose a purple and yellow complementary color palette and I found a soft pastel brush in Toon Boom after a bit of trial and error and then proceeded to color in the characters as if I were using my own colored pencils. That way we could maintain the texture we wanted. So I started with a test shot and showed it to the team and it looked good to us. So I went through Tenille's whole animatic and replaced the sketches he had done with my finished pastel drawn characters. He had already done all the movement and camera shots, so the only other thing I had to do was paint some tasty backgrounds to go with it and call it good. After I had finished all the shots, I tossed them back at Tenille for final editing. The result was that very stylized, dreamlike intro, and we were pretty happy with it. So, moving on to episode two, and without divulging too many spoilers, there are a couple of flashback scenes that explain the past relationship into the present between Golden Pelt and Spotted Shadow. We all looked at the storyboards, skillfully crafted by Bethelumps, and talked about how to animate certain shots to differentiate the flashbacks from the present, and we all kind of decided it would be cool to do them like the intro, in that PMV format with the sketchy looking style. There was a lot of action in the flashbacks that would probably be too much to tackle if it were straight up animated, like kittens tumbling around and all that. We also wanted a more stylized visual because this would be based on Spotted Shadow's memories and memories are less specific and more based on a feeling. So as you can see in the time lapse, this is Photoshop, my painting program of choice. The industry standard, as I was told in college. I draw and paint in Photoshop because it's what I learned and it's what I pay for. And I'm a bit of a slow learner, so I don't really take well to new programs. I found it easier to use my old Reliable to draw and color the style we chose for our intro and flashback sequences rather than Toon Boom. After reviewing the character models and mapping out the staging, we started drawing. I painted a background based on Beth's color keys and drew some little baby cats for the first flashback. But this time, process would go backwards from how we did the intro. I would do the backgrounds first, then draw and color the characters, and then hand those off to Tenille, who would edit them all together in a PMV style. So, same jobs, different order. The result looks great. Now, I do like the way the intro turned out. It was snappy and fun, and it came together as quickly and easily as we needed at the time. A few people did critique the intro as looking a little unfinished due to the inconsistency of the strokes of colors in a few places. So I really wanted to go back and make the style more detailed moving forward. So thanks for the critique. 
I like this new process a lot better. Working in Photoshop, I can do multiple frames in a single file without feeling like I'm muddying up my workspace. I can take my time on each shot and make sure we have the poses and expressions we need to convey the emotion of the characters. I don't color them how I would normally color something. I draw something more like a paint by numbers and fill it in to maintain that flat sketchy texture. The colors of the backgrounds and the characters are based on the color keys that Beth did to match her storyboards. And they are so pretty. Look at this. Anyway, we are hoping to get these flashbacks finished soon, and we are actually pretty far along with it. We have a few roughs happening with our other animators as well, so overall production is going a lot smoother for chapter two. Chapter one was quite a learning experience. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed watching a little bit of the process and listening to me ramble. Maybe next time I can talk about the writing process or how we figure out staging. That was a whole thing. Until next time. Cheers.